Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the marine debris and human impacts on sea turtle in southern Brazil. Before I introduce my topic, I would like to explain what is marine debris. Marine debris is also known as anthropogenic debris. Debris simply means it is garbage, and anthropogenic means it is generated by human beings, including fishing gear, raw plastics, styrofoam boxes, and etc. So first, I assume everyone has a brief idea of ocean pollution. Unfortunately, the overall reduction of sea turtles populations has been directly or indirectly related to ocean pollution and to predatory fishing. The marine pollution are mainly oils and persistent plastics. They may have an impact on survival ship of sea, of sea turtles. So the researcher had chosen Brazil as their research location is because there are five different species of sea turtle that nest at there. And the point is, this study represents data on debris intake by green turtle, longer head turtle, and little back turtles. Are because the three of them were frequently found dead stranded on the beaches in Brazil. So until here, you might be asking about the meaning of dead stranded. Stranded means it is stuck or unable to move or live from a particular place. So dead stranded means the animal was dead and their dead body is remained in the same place. And the purpose of this study is to determine the impact of anthropogenic debris and fisheries activities on sea turtle on the coast of Rio Grande do Sul states in southern Brazil. In the beginning, those dead stranded sea turtle were collected on 11 occasions between the beach of Pinha and Langoda do Pax from August 1997 to July 1998. After they collected the carcasses, the digestive tract was removed from the esophagus and preserved it in 70% of ethanol. And finally, the gut contents will be determined as soon as possible. To clarify, the esophagus is a food pipe and it, links, it takes food from the mouth to the stomach. So in this graph, the x-axis represents the main species of stranded sea turtle and the y-axis represents the number of stranded sea turtle. So there are a total of 92 of stranded sea turtle were found and there are 56 of green 16 of longer head and two little back turtles. Moreover, there are 38 of green, 10 of longer head, and two little back gut contents were collected as well. So now let's focus on the frequency of occurrence of anthropogenic debris that ingested by green turtle. So as you can see, there are eight sections of the debris in the slide. And it is clear to observe that the plastic bag sections gain the highest frequency of occurrence among those debris. If we continue to analyze the percentage of different plastic bags in different colors, the outcome will be just like the graph you are looking at. So the x-axis represent the main color of plastic bags and the y-axis represent the percentage of different colors of plastic bags. The transparent and white color plastic bags gain the higher frequency of the percentage than the black and other colors. And the reason is related to the common diet of the green turtle. Transparent and white color plastic bags coincidentally look like jellyfish in the ocean. So the green turtle might mistake the debris for the jellyfish. In this study, the researchers found that the debris injections were frequently in small amounts. 
for example, they only found that uh, they only found 1.4 to 3.2 grams of the debris in the gut. Hence, there is a possibility that the sub laughter effects are more common than laughter effects. So, what is laughter effect? Some pollutants, such as residential waste or excess carbon dioxide, are increasing their concentration in the ocean and that will endanger the life of marine animals and plants by slowly reducing their numbers due to suffocation and premature deaths. However, sub-laughter sub effect is quite different from laughter effects. The outcome of sub-laughter effects will lead to reproductive failure, changes in behavior, reduction in development rates, and population growth. So back to the study, the pollutants such as raw plastics that are eaten by young longerhead turtles will lead to malnutrition. Even though the young longerheads try to intake increasingly just to compensate for their nutrition, however, the damage is done. It is very difficult for them to improve their own situation. So the outcome of anthropogenic debris ingestion Will lead to reduce growth. Will lead to growth rate reduction, taking longer periods to develop at science, decreased ability to reach appropriate offshore current systems, and finally, decrease their survival ships. So we already done talking about the debris ingestion of green turtle. How about the longer head and little back turtle? In this study. The longer head turtle have shown with a fragment of plastic bags that only less than 0.1 gram. And one of the two little bag turtle ingested 0.2 gram of the plastics. The reason is because longer heads have wider alimentary tract. Alimentary tract is also known as digestive tract. It links from the esophagus, as I mentioned before, to the anus. So the debris ingested by longer heads would have shorter residual time in the stomach. Besides, longer heads have more powerful jaw muscle, which enable them to feed on hard shell prey, such as wax and coach, rather than jellyfish. So four of the 92 of the sea turtles, including one green and three longer heads in this study, have presented signs of direct interactions with human, which including the entire carapace removed and vigorous road tie around the neck. These sort of sad things always happen to them are because our human being wanted to sell the turtle shell for decorative purpose in the informal market. Unfortunately, again, the death of sea turtles is quite difficult to determine because the death by drowning or due to entanglement in nets do not generally leave visible marks on the dead body. So the sea turtle could be considered as a poor estimator of fishing induced mortality. So once again, this considerable amount of anthropogenic debris ingestions was only ingested by green turtle. So it could be concluded that the high frequency of anthropogenic debris ingestion is proven in this study. Besides, I also mentioned about the death of green turtle, of sea turtle, is quite difficult to determine. So the fisheries induced mortality are probably underestimated in this study. Moreover, the impact on fisheries on sea turtle are urgently required, and the effective actions which could reduce the human impacts such as pollution and fisheries are required as well. Thank you. I think your artwork are better than talk one. And uh, you increase 
more cute photo on your slide. That's all. Thanks for your presentation, and I think you have explained the difficult words with the figures, makes us more easily understanding. And the presentation is very fluent, and the speed of your speech has already slowed down, which we 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 listen more comfortable. Thank you.